Right, so I'll uh, continue with the discussion. So we have uh, two questions that uh, is to be discussed, question number nine and question number 10. Uh, before moving on to those two questions, uh, I will just uh, finish with the last part of question uh, number eight. Uh, because I did not use the board for the last part of question uh, number eight, where you have a small calculation to perform. I just explained it using qualitative pictures. So here uh, I gave you some uh, uh, reactions as well, but it is always good to have a quantitative picture as well. So uh, here you can see in the board. So this is the story. So they have a rectangular uh, block. With the area, you can calculate eight into five centimeters. And then if you think the thickness of the block is uh, any anything as y or x centimeters, you can calculate the volume here. It will be eight into five into y centimeter cube. And then they have given the density of this uh, chromium block. So you can multiply it by the density, 7.2 grams a cubic centimeter. So you can calculate the weight of this chromium uh, using this uh, formula. So it will be 40 into 7.2 gram into Y. So there is this unknown term, which is Y here. So this is the thing that you have to find in that uh, question, okay? So the idea is they have this block. Then what they do is uh, they first uh, add a, acid, then it will be converted to all chromium three plus. And then uh, they add the disulfuric uh, uh, one, then uh, you can see there is this uh, oxidation happening and the reduction that is happening. So basically when you add this species, all your chromium three plus is converted to Cr2 O7 two minus, right? Then what they do, they do, they add a uh, ferrous ammonium sulfate, 3.1 grams. And when you calculate using its uh, molecular weight, you can see its molar mass is 392 point, uh, 392. So you can calculate the number of moles here, moles of uh, Fe2 plus. So you know here how much ammonium sulfate is added. So this is known. And uh, then if you know this one, you can write down the reaction between the Fe2 plus that is happening uh, with Cr2 O7 2 minus, okay? So there is the Cr2 O7 2 minus reaction here. So additionally, you need Fe2 plus that is oxidized to uh, Fe3 plus plus electron, okay? Then uh, what is happening here is, when all chromium three plus is converted to Cr2 O7 two minus, some of this will be reacting with this one. Fe2 plus will be oxidized to Fe3 plus, and some of this Cr2 O7 two minus will be reduced to chromium three plus in the acidic medium as they have given. So there will be this uh, reverse reaction that is happening as well. And meanwhile, uh, a small portion of it will be remaining. Then this remaining is reacted here with dichromate again, and they have given the volume as well as the concentration, okay? So the calculation is like this. You know how much excess remained, Cr2 O7 number of moles, Based on that, you can calculate the amount of uh, Fe3 plus basically reacted. Then if you want to know this amount, because if you know this amount, it means you know this amount. If you know this amount, you can multiply it by the its molecular weight 52 to get the weight and you can equalize this to this weight and you can find why that is the only term that is that you don't know here, okay? The advantage is here, you know how much ferrous ammonium sulfate that is added. So based on this Fe2 plus and the stoichiometry of chromium, one is to six. So you can calculate the amount of Cr2O7 that is reacted with this one. And then you have the remaining one using this one and you can subtract it 
to get the amount that is actually in the sample, then you can back calculate chromium three plus, and then you can uh, use this equation to get the mass of it. Okay. Uh, the only unknown term here is y. So this is the entire story. So this this is this is just the reaction that is happening initially with the disulfuric one. Then there will be this Fe two plus oxidizing to Fe three plus. And here the form uh, Cr two also. The same reaction will happen towards the other side, which is the reduction. Here I have just given you the oxidation, so you can imagine what is happening in the reduction. Okay, so this equation is given here but uh, you know after writing this equation you have to multiply here by three to equalize the number of electrons and you then add these two to give the overall redox reaction that is what they have expected in question number one and then it's all same you get the difference and you plug it here to get the cr 2 2 minus, which will be the same as chromium, because uh, when you consider about the stoichiometry here after multiplying, this is 1 is to 2. So you can multiply it by 2 to get the chromium 3 plus number of moles, then multiply it by 52 to get the mass, then equalize to this. The only term that you don't know here is pi. Okay, so you can calculate pi. So this is a small uh, quantitative explanation for the last part of question number 8, right? Right, so now we will uh, discuss question number nine and 10. So first of all, I will uh, share the screen to uh, understand the composition and everything. So this is the question. So the following question is based on the extraction of the iron. So, so far we have uh, discussed about uh, 70 to 80% of the industries that you have in your syllabus, uh, like uh, ammonia, nitric acid, sulfuric and we have separately discussed about polymers along with uh, natural rubber and uh, we have discussed uh, some other industries along with sodium this caustic soda and last week we discussed about sodium carbonate and then uh, this is another one that can be uh, very important in your syllabus that is uh, iron uh, this is one of the papers they have asked about this iron after about uh, eight to 10 years because this was asked before the new syllabus that was uh, described after 2011. So this is the first time. And uh, also it is important to understand other than these industries that we have up to discuss, uh, discuss up to now. We have like titanium and titanium oxide, uh, titanium dioxide, in fact, TiO2. Uh, which is also important in extraction. And uh, as I told you before, the extraction of sodium, aluminium, all those things are removed, you, but you have magnesium in new syllabus. And uh, we also have discussed about soap industry. So it is important to gather all information uh, through the past papers because we have just discussed uh, for, for, in fact, up to now it is three and uh, you can understand how much knowledge we have gathered about industrial chemistry. Okay, so this is about iron. So the first question asks, uh, give the common names along with their chemical formula of the iron ores and other raw materials that you use in the extraction of iron. So in uh, primarily for iron, we can use iron ores. Uh, mainly there are two. One is uh, Fe2O3 that we name them as hematite. And the other one is Fe uh, three O four, which is called magnetite. Okay, but don't forget. Sometimes students uh, mix up with this magnesite. Okay, uh, this is not magnesite. This is magnetite. Okay, I'll uh, stop sharing and share the screen for myself. Okay. So this is hematite, this is magnetite. Remember, this is not magnesite. Magnesite is MgCO3. If you can remember, you have if you have calcium carbonate, MgCO3, it is called dolomite. But if you have only MgCO3, it is typically called magnesite. Right?
So this is not the one that uh, you should uh, expect. Okay. So raw materials, one is this, you need iron ore. The other one is you need coke, which is carbon. And also you need uh, limestone, which is calcium carbonate. And also you can use dolomite as well, right? So the raw materials, there are three raw materials. First one is the iron ore, this is the main uh, one. And the other raw materials include coke, uh, limestone, and even you can use uh, dolomite as well. Okay. Right. Uh, the second question asks about the uh, importance, I guess. Yeah. So discuss briefly the function of each of the raw materials except the iron ore. Okay. So use balanced chemical equations where applicable. So the idea here about this question is like, so the other raw material include first one is coke, the carbon, right? So what is happening with this carbon? The main idea is when this coke get burns, it increases large amount of heat, which is important to maintain the bottom temperature very in a very high amount. That is one of the advantages of this coke, right? Because uh, you might have also seen about carbon burning in these trees and everything. You know how much um, high temperature feeling that you get when you are around these areas, right? So one of the first uh, uh, advantage is when disease uh, burn in large amount, it will release high amount of heat, which will be essential to keep the bottom temperature in the blast furnace in a high amount, okay? So that is one of the important uh, aspects of this. And the other thing is um, when this uh, carbon reacting with oxygen, it will produce carbon dioxide. So there will be this reaction that is happening. This carbon dioxide can again react with this coke to form carbon monoxide. So I have explained this to you about one of the incidents that is happening uh, in the case with the barbecue situation. Uh, what has happened here, CO produced and they were in a hood, so there can be like a hemoglobin that is blocked in the body, making them poison. So that is uh, actually an incident that is happening in most cases, in most frequently. People don't have knowledge about this. So the idea here is uh, one advantage I told you, that is the increasing temperature of the bottom of the blast furnace. The second thing is the carbon dioxide that produce allow again the reaction with the carbon that produces carbon monoxide, which is the main, okay? So which is the main reducing agent. This is important because this species helps to reduce these iron ores to form iron because this is extraction of iron. So you need the iron at the end in the free form. So this is very important. Carbon monoxide is very important. So this is the second advantage. And the third advantage is when you have this coke carbon, it can go to a direct, uh, direct uh, reduction of this uh, iron oxide, FeO, to form iron directly. So this is another advantage. Right, so meanwhile it will form CO2 as well, okay? So I have uh, told you three advantages. One is to increase the temperature at the bottom of the blast furnace because after combustion, it will em emit large amount of heat energy. Second one is to formation of the main reducing agent which is carbon uh, monoxide after producing CO2. And the third one is it can uh, have a direct reduction with uh, iron oxide, FeO, uh, to form iron and carbon dioxide. But don't forget this FeO cannot be formed directly, right? Because we use iron ores either Fe2 or 3 or either Fe3 or 4. So some other processes have to be carried out in order to produce FeO. So don't forget, right? So this is uh, the importance of using coke, right? So what is the other one?
The other one that we use is either limestone, calcium carbonate, or dolomite, which contains calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate. Okay. So, what are the advantage of this? So, you know, there can be many impurities in the iron ore, like the silicons and aluminium. So, when I tell this one, you should be able to remember about the main thing that is called the slag, right? So in the blast furnace, we form this slag, which is very important to uh, important for many things. The primary idea is when you have this slag liquid that is floating, because this density is very poor. So density is low means it's float on the surface, which prevents the uh, oxidation of ion species in the bottom, because there cannot be like the transfer of oxygen into this uh, ion thing, uh, because slag floats on the surface and prevent the transmission of oxygen. Okay, so this is one of the advantages. But why uh, we use calcium carbonate? This is the, the other raw material. So basically when you have uh, calcium carbonate, uh, it can decompose into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide, right? So there is an importance of this calcium oxide because you know if you have calcium oxide, you can have SiO2, which is typically uh, sand in the iron ore, and you have some aluminium oxides there can be. So these will form calcium silicates and calcium um, aluminates, so which can uh, be considered as in the slag form, which can remove these impurities. Now these are impurities, right? Okay, so this is one of the main reactions that is happening in the uh, uh, blast furnace that uh, allow us to remove impurities. Okay, so this is the uh, importance of other raw materials that is uh, essentially needed. Right, so one of the things that you need to understand when they are asking about these uh, raw materials, so you gave coke and calcium carbonate oil at the dolomite here. And then you have to explain each of these. So mainly we have uh, coke and the uh, calcium carbonate. So I explained to you the uh, importance of uh, coke. So we explained three and with the calcium carbonate. So first is produce calcium oxide. So you need to write down that reaction here. And then you need to show the reaction between silicons, uh, silicate, it's basically SiO2 and uh, Al2O3. Okay, so the third one. So we have discussed this one in uh, one of the uh, MCQ papers, if you remember, the stepwise reduction of the uh, iron ore that is happening uh, in order to produce iron. So primarily what is uh, happening here, okay. So the first thing happening here is when you have uh, Fe2O3, uh, it will react with carbon monoxide. So always carbon monoxide because this is the main reducing agent that will produce our uh, iron at the end of the uh, whole complete process. Okay. So there will be Fe3O4 uh, twice uh, that will produce uh, maybe 10, uh, nine, ten, yeah. So first, initially, if you have hematite, don't forget, hematite can be there. It will be converted into magnetite. And then this magnetite again will be reacting with carbon monoxide to form FeO plus CO2. So this is the place. Remember, coke, one of the use of the coke, it can be directly used for the reduction of FeO. So this is the one of the place where you use uh, FeO for the direct reduction of the coke. If you remember about this reaction, it can produce Fe and CO2. So this is one of the important reaction that you can write at the end of the reaction because this is not actually belongs to this stepwise reduction. Basically it contains three steps. This is the first one. This is the second one. And the third one includes FeO with again carbon monoxide giving iron and finally carbon dioxide. Okay. 
So in one of the MCQ papers, if you can remember, I guess it is uh, 2012, they have uh, asked about this uh, ion extraction. And in uh, the last 10 of 41 to 15, they have given this ion reduction happens in a three step process. So these are the these three step process. Okay, first you have hematite converted to magnetite and this magnetite again converted to uh, ferrous oxide and ferrous oxide with again the reducing agency finally produced with iron, okay? But don't forget this magnetite is not only produced from hematite, it can be also freely present in the iron ore because I told you there can be magnetite in the free iron ore as well, okay? So this can be a nice place to give you a calculation because uh, they will tell like that there is a mixture of uh, hematite and magnetite in it. So if you reduce it, in, these reactions can happen and they will finally give you to find some composition of the hematite and magnetite by using either oxidation reduction methods or precipitation methods. So I either even this, this reaction, okay? So these are the three main uh, steps of this redu uh, reduction. And if you take this three and you can write a one of uh, overall reaction. So this will be Fe2O3 and three COs reacting to give to Fe plus three CO2. Okay, so you can cut this this and there will be three CO that is using and when you cut this entire thing there will be two Fe form. So this is very important to understand about the overall reaction but don't forget there is this reaction that is happening right don't forget about this but this one does not belongs to our three stepwise uh, production. This is like an additional advantage where because of coke uh, that we use, uh, iron is uh, produced by the direct reduction of this FPO. Right. Right. So the next one is, right, I'll share skin again. Uh, right. So we have this stepwise uh, reduction and Write the name given to the molten iron form at the bottom of the blast furnace and give its approximate composition. So it is the raw iron. Uh, in Singhala, we call it is Amuyakada. So basically, this is the raw iron that will be formed. So it mainly consists of iron and uh, three to four, okay? Three to four percent of uh, carbon and there can be silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, or even manganese as well, okay? Uh, you, you might think why we still have some silicons and these things because some of the elements that can be even present in the, their pure form. So there can be some contamination. So that is why they have this amount. This is also important in some cases where if you want to like uh, produce the stainless steels at this case, it is advantageous, right? So which is they have asked next see. Indicate the changes in the composition to, that need to require uh, to obtain the iron. Okay, so we have obtained iron, so you need to change some composition to make it stainless steel. So what is basically done here is uh, you need to remove or to reduce uh, the carbon amount and uh, we need to remove silicon, uh, manganese and phosphorus uh, as slag, like typical reaction that I have explained to you just before, like the calcium sil uh, silicates or calcium aluminate, so you can remove those. And also you can add uh, nickel and chromium, which is essential for making stainless steel because steel contain iron, nickel, chromium, carbon, and manganese. And also uh, uh, you need to uh, supply hot air in order to uh, send oxygen uh, for the liquid Fe. Uh, because uh, this is also essential uh, to maintain the temperature. So these are the things that can be changed here according to your uh, syllabus and the evaluation. So these are the things that they have expected that, that but there can be many things uh, in order to produce stainless steel because uh, different industries have different procedures. Uh, but the primary idea is always same. Okay, the only difference is they have used different strategies to uh, give uh, much profit or less profit or much yield. So that is how it goes, right? 
And uh, question number six, uh, calculate the mass of the gas identified in part three. So part three means uh, it is the uh, carbon monoxide uh, in kilogram used in the stepwise conversion of iron ore to produce 200, 200, 2000 kilogram of iron. So basically they are, this is the stepwise uh, production of iron. So if I uh, stop sharing. So this is the stepwise production of iron and this is the overall reaction. So the main idea is we can use this overall reaction in order to calculate. So you can see here, uh, so they're asking how much gas you need, how much gas uh, you need to produce 2000 kilogram of uh, iron. So you can see the stoichiometry is 3 is to 2. So basically if you have 56 into 2 grams of iron, you need uh, carbon is 12, oxygen is 28 into 3 grams of carbon monoxide. Okay, that is how 2 moles to 3 moles, 2 moles to 3 moles. Then you can calculate if you need 2000 grams, how much CO uh weight is needed right so this is just the cross multiplication okay so normally we use if one mango is 10 rupees five mangoes is 50 rupees how you calculate you use the cross multiplication so same you can go with this right but in fact you can imagine like here it is um, 112 and here it is uh, four and eight. So the ratio is about uh, 1.5 actually, right? Because this is like common equation that we used to study many times. So the ratio is 1.5. So basically if you have 2000 kilograms, when you back calculate, uh, it is just like you divide it by two and multiply by 1.5. So basically it is 15 over two. So when you calculate, you can see it will be around uh, very close to 1,500 kilograms. Okay. You can just calculate. This is very simple maths. Okay. Right. So the next question. Right. So the next question is the wastewater mixture. Okay. So the next question is, uh, is it different from this? The waste gas. Okay. This is another thing that you need to, the waste gas mixture that travels up and comes out of the blast furnace is known as the fuel gas, fuel gas of the Hagium blast furnace gas. Generally it is called the fuel gas. Uh, state principal gas is present in the mixture. So basically you have carbon monoxide. So you have carbon dioxide and uh, there can be some uh, nitrogen as well so which is the main identify the prominent gas so nitrogen is the main gas that can be present in this uh, fuel gas uh, uh, that is i think uh, enough for this particular question basically yeah this, that is enough because basically you have carbon monoxide carbon dioxide and uh, nitrogen okay and the prominent one is uh, this Predominant one actually is the nitrogen gas. Right, so this sums up our extraction procedure. So you can understand there is a nice uh, procedure that is happening in the uh, blast furnace. Uh, the only missing thing here, okay, they have asked everything here. The only missing part is the temperature. Because in the blast furnace, this step does not happen in the same place. You can imagine the temperature variation. I have explained this in one of the MCQs in the previous year, even with the uh, question, in some question, previous questions, so the, how this temperature varies in the blast furnace, right? So top to bottom, what is the temperature increment? So these reactions happen at different stages. So that is also important, right? So you know what are the reactions now that is happening with coke and what are the reactions that is happening with carbon monoxide and what are the reaction that is happening with the removal of impurities such as uh, SiO2 and Al2O3 forming the slag and then check the blast furnace diagram where this reaction happens in the furnace as well as the temperature. That is very important to remember. Okay, remember about the temperature as well. Right, so we have to discuss this, uh, the rest of the questions. So
So before that, we go to the question. So state two major carbon species found each in each of the following. So atmosphere. So what do you have in atmosphere? Atmosphere, you will primarily have all the gases that is uh, carbon dioxide is mainly present in the atmosphere. And uh, you can write uh, um, methane gas from the biogenic, uh, bio, basically bio processes that is forming. And uh, you will have low molecular weight uh, volatile hydrocarbons that is present. So in the atmosphere, you cannot write oxygen, nitrogen because, okay, they have asked about the major carbon species. So mainly CO2, methane, and low molecular weight, volatile hydrocarbons, even carbon particles can be there in the atmosphere. And then uh, lithosphere. So what do you have in lithosphere? So mainly they are considering about the crust. So crust, you can uh, mainly have uh, fossil fuel, which is the main prominent one. And we have uh, diamond in some countries, not Sri Lanka, because Sri Lanka, they have graphite. So which is a little bit unlucky because when you consider about the structure, graphite, you have like sp3 and sp2 mixture with different plates. But uh, basically in A level, we say sp2. Uh, but when you consider about diamond, this the hybridization is changed, right? So think about that a small hybridization change could have made all graphite in Sri Lanka to diamond, then Sri Lanka will be very rich up to now. But we are a little bit unlucky. We have a lot of graphite, not much diamond. Okay, so diamond, there can be graphite, there can be um, fossil fuels, so you can write down anything. And uh, hydrosphere, so this is uh, basically the water component. So mainly there can be uh, carbon dioxide, dissolved carbon dioxide, you can write carbon dioxide aqueous. And from that, which you can form a carbonic acid, H2CO3, as well as bicarbonates. So this can be present in the atmosphere, okay. State five uh, natural processes that provide and remove carbon species uh, to and form the atmosphere. So basically you need to mention five processes where carbon dioxide is either removed or formed. So what do you have? Like mainly the uh, photosynthesis where carbon dioxide is removed by the natural process. So CO2 plus water forming glucose and oxygen. So that is um, photosynthesis. And the other way around is the respiration, which is going to produce carbon dioxide basically. Uh, the respiration by animals and even plants. So you can write down those two. And there can be natural burning of these fossil fuels that will give you carbon dioxide and the species. And there can be microbial processes that emit this uh, carbon dioxide into the um, uh, atmosphere. Uh, microbial, we can say microbial reduction and then uh, microbial oxidation in some cases. And those things can happen. And uh, we can have some decomposition reactions in the environment that gives you uh, carbon dioxide. For an example, at high temperature, limestones also even give us carbon dioxide. Uh, that is uh, human activities, basically. But you need to mention here natural processes. So basically, there can be photosynthesis, respiration, microbial oxidation, and uh, some other decomposition reactions even. So you can write down anything, right? Natural burning also. <coughs> Right, <clears throat> and also you need to mention uh, what is actually happening, right? For an example, photosynthesis produces or remove carbon dioxide, it removes. Respiration, animal respiration, plant respiration produces. Uh, decomposition reactions produces. Microbial uh, reduction sometimes removes, sometimes produce. So it depends, right? So you can explain those things. And question number three, explain how human activities increase carbon content. So the main thing is, well, what is the main thing that we, in, we are encountering today? Even with Sri Lanka, this is the problem now. What is it? Main thing is Kaskapana. Deforestation is main thing, one of the main things. And the other thing is uh, burning fossil fuels. So increased in vehicle amounts is another problem, which will cause uh, increase in carbon dioxide concentration by volume. So you know, generally we tell that is 0 0.03, but now it's different, a little bit different. So increasing, increasing all the way. And the other one is the main thing is the agricultural things in the wetlands that can even produce methane. So these are the human activities that generally produce carbon uh, species. Uh, 
uh, state uh, to global environmental issues that are caused by the elevation of uh, carbon content. So you know the mainly when you have this carbon dioxide and methane, which is which are the greenhouse gases, which will cause global warming. So that is the main thing, which also in return uh, allows to uh, depletion of ozone layer. And also, if you can remember, we describe about this carbon volatile hydrocarbons in photochemical smog. So this can also cause photochemical smog as well. Okay, peroxyacetyl nitrate, peroxybenzoyl nitrate can be formed uh, with the help of these uh, carbon particles as well as solar energy. Uh, if you can remember, in fact, with ozone as well, the main polluter in photochemical smog, they can cause this photochemical smog. So basically global warming, depletion of ozone layer and photochemical smog. Name the chemical, uh, chemical species or chemical uh, classes of chemical species that are possible for the environmental issues that you mentioned about. So mainly you can imagine the, we have already discussed about this global warming or greenhouse thing and photochemical smog. So basically you can explain what are the species. So primarily uh, there can be carbon dioxide, methanes, noxus like NO2, or you can write NOx just to mention the noxus, okay? And then you have uh, CFC, HCFC, then peroxyacetyl nitrile, peroxybenzoyl nitrate in case with the uh, photochemical smog as well. So you can explain all that. Right to detrimental effects caused by each of the environmental issues uh, stated in part four on the global climate change. So basically, when you consider about uh, global warming, so you can explain uh, when global warming is happening, there can be like increasing in temperature. So basically there will be high rising sea level, which may cause the flooding in the coastal areas. So you can explain these things, but you don't need to mention these things, just you know, sea level rise. So flooding in coastal. And then with the depletion of ozone layer that you can explain skin cancer. So eye cataracts may happen. And with the photochemical smog, you can explain there will be problems in vision because of the this uh, brownish color thing in the photochemical smogs, okay? You just have to mention the state, the uh, effect. You don't have to explain these things. It will cost time. There is uh, no point in explaining these things, okay? So this is another part that again touch about uh, this uh, global warming, photochemical smog and um, ozone layer depletion, mainly the natural uh, disaster that is happening because of the human activity. So this is also very important to understand. And we also have discussed these things, specifically each of these uh, environmental processes separately also. So I think you should have a sound knowledge about this now, okay?